Guys, I just checked my P.O. box. Look what arrived. <laughs> this landing in my P.O. box means that the October book apocalypse is starting and I am so excited. If you guys didn't know, there's like so many romance books being released in October and they're some of my favorite series ever. And every book is getting released within like a week of each other or e even a few days. So I pre-ordered all of them and the first one just got here and I think over the next like two weeks, they're all gonna start coming. And I actually could not be more excited to read these books. So I thought I would make an entire video reading vlog, reading the books that come out this month. I don't know if this is gonna be three books or four books. First book that I ordered was Wildfire by Hannah Grace, which is the second book after Icebreaker, which I loved last year. And so I've been really anticipating this one and so this is gonna be the first one I read in this video because it's the first one to come out. And then I think the next one that comes out is Caught Up by Liz Tom Ford, which is probably my most excited I've been for a book in a really, really long time. If you guys know, it's part of the Windy City series, which was Mile High and The Right Move, which were two of my favorite books again of last year. Or did I read them earlier this year? It might've been earlier this year. I don't know, but. The Right Move is, is one of my favorite books of all time now. So that's the third book, which I'm so excited about because it's Single Dad Trope, which is my favorite. Then the third one that's coming is Hopeless by Elsie Silver, which is the fifth book in the Chestnut Spring series, which is one of my favorite series of all time. Well, all of these are, but that one especially. And it's the last book in that series, and I'm so, so, so excited for it. I'm definitely gonna read those three. And then I know King of Greed by Anna Huang comes out this month, which I've read the first two books in that series. It's um King of Wrath and King of Pride I read. I liked the first one. I didn't really like the second one so I don't I have like mixed feelings for the third one coming out like I'm not too excited but like I'm still gonna read it but I think that one comes out at the end of the month I'm not really sure actually let me check oh yeah it says King of Greed isn't gonna come till October 28th it's currently the very beginning of October so that one might not make it in this video but I'm sure it will be in my reading wrap-ups or something coming up soon I'm gonna start wildfire today I love when new books come out in my favorite series and the fact that these are all coming out back to back like this is my Super Bowl like this is gonna be the best reading month ever unless these books disappoint me, but I have very high expectations. I think I'm gonna do this vlog spoiler free and just kind of update you with like little plot points, you know, like other spoiler free vlogs. I'm gonna try not to like give away too much, but if you don't wanna know anything, then don't watch this video. If you've already read these, then let's fangirl together. I won't spoil like big things, but we'll talk about it. Maybe I'll do a spoiler section at the end. I don't really know. Depends how much I wanna say, and then I'll rate all of them. I was literally on my way out the door when I got this, so I'm about to go to a cafe to edit, and I think I'm just gonna bring the book with me and maybe start it while I'm sitting at the cafe, or maybe like I'll go sit by the water or something, I don't know. But I was about to leave, and now I'm like too excited, and I have to bring the book with me. This is Russ's book, which, he was like a minor character in the last book. He's like new to the friend group, if I'm remembering correctly. I also have like book amnesia. Like I don't remember anything after I read a book. I just know that I loved Icebreaker. I barely remember anything about it. Wait, why is the dedication gonna make me cry? <laughs> Wait, look. It says for younger me who wanted to be his first choice. <laughs> why am I crying? Okay, I just got back I'm on chapter eight. And when I tell you I am in love with this man, like he is so my type. He's so like awkward and shy and nervous. Oh, something about it is just really doing it for me. Also, I did not expect this to be like, like I would not expect him to partake in a one night stand trope. Like that's not what I thought this was gonna be. When I first met him, I was like, oh, cute. And then they're hooking up. I'm like, wait. And like the party, I love the friend group in this book so much. Like the party scenes, like them all dancing. Um, but there was a quote I had to I had to tell you about. And Aurora says, for all the romance books I've read and all the happy endings I've enjoyed, I can't imagine my own. I'd like to hope I'll have one, but hope can be dangerous. I need Henry's book, bro, every time I see him. But also like, why in my head is Henry like such a sweet, wholesome boy? And then like, they talk about the things he does and I'm like, oh wait. Maybe he's not, <laughs> but he is to me. But yeah, we're starting to see like the family dynamics a little bit. I think they both have some family trauma going on, but then they're like, oh, but we're never gonna see each other again. And like, it was such an awkward ending or like whatever. And now they're at the camp and literally the last thing I read was them realizing that each other is at the camp. I'm gonna continue reading now. I'm a little bit scared. Like, I feel like this is a point where they always like ruin it. Like. 
someone's gonna say something stupid or they're gonna be like, we should just pretend that never happened or whatever. I read too many books because how did I know it was gonna go exactly this way? This is such like an interesting, like I was not expecting them to be at, like a full ass summer camp. I literally we used to go to summer camp when I was a kid. I went to horseback riding camp at a Girl Scout camp and I'm envisioning this whole camp exactly the same because we also had a lake and like the tent cabin things. It's so crazy too. When I was at summer camp, I think my camp counselors were like 16 or 17 and when I was a kid, I thought they were so old and like so cool. Now I'm thinking about it. I'm like, they were literally just teenagers. <laughs> the tension between them is so insane. Like, are they not gonna acknowledge the elephant in the room? As sweet and cute and how much I love him, he is kind of stupid when he, his word choice. One thing about me is every time one of the characters is drunk and there's like a drunk confession or a drunk conversation, I'm gonna eat it up every time. I love it. <laughs> finally, they're talking about that one night with all the miscommunications. I'm like, finally get over that. Like, damn. I just changed into my real reading fit. Wait, can you even see me? Cause it's backlit. This is when you know things get serious. I'm wearing my blanket hoodie. <laughs> Bro, I just love him so much. He's so cute. I'm a little bit confused why this takes place at a summer camp. Like, I don't know. It feels like it doesn't connect to the first book at all because it's a completely different setting and like they don't even really talk about hockey. And like, I thought this was like a hockey romance series. Maybe I was just wrong, but like he is a hockey player. It just has literally nothing to do with hockey. Like they're at a summer camp and it's giving very much like a different vibe. Like you wouldn't think these books are connected if they didn't like occasionally mention the other characters. And I'm trying to decide what I prefer. Like, I feel like I would prefer if they were all like at the college. I don't know. Like this is so isolated is what I'm trying to say. Like the friend group's not there. It's a whole new friend group with the, in, within the summer camp, like these new characters and stuff. And, like. I kind of just want the old characters, you know? Like I kind of just want like the friend group to be all together again. And I kind of just wish this was like a hockey romance at the school. I don't know though, I still really like it. I'm watching you go in so you don't have to watch me leave. Also, this is moving like a lot faster than I thought. Like how am I, am I halfway yet? Oh my God, I'm kind of grinding. Like I'm kind of confused. It's like, it's just very obvious they like each other. It's like, what is the rest of this gonna be? Like, that can't be a good sign. <laughs> Henry! Oh my god! See, I was just talking about how I thought you were so cute and wholesome. What the hell are you doing? Hello, it's the next morning. Also, ignore the gigantic pimple on my face, but you know what? It happens to the best of us. I just woke up and I'm gonna read. I'm this far in. Does anyone else use the weirdest things as, as a bookmark? Like, why am I using my SD card adapter? as my bookmark, as if I don't have like 500 bookmarks to choose from. Oh, I forgot where I left off. Not happy vibes. Ah, not saying his favorite color is green. And she's like, what type of green? And he's like, whatever shade your eyes are. I would throw up on him in a good way. They're opening up to each other. It's happening. They're gonna fall in love. I love how like all the little campers are like, we all know you have a crush on him. And she's like, no. And they all know. No, it's a terrible sign when they're like happy and together and like being really cute and you have this much of the book left. Like either they're gonna be happy and cute and I'm gonna get bored because there's this much of the book left or something terrible is gonna happen and they're gonna break up and have to re-fall in love. I kind of hope it's the second option to be honest. I need some drama. Wow, Russ is finally breaking some rules. Let's fucking go. Oh my God, my eyes just twitched when I did that. Am I okay? Oh yay, the friends are finally all here. Why am I just now making the connection? I know they mentioned it before, but I like don't really remember Icebreaker that much because I have book amnesia and forget everything as soon as it happens. But I remember the ice rink getting destroyed. I didn't know Russ was the one who, well, Russ is taking the blame for it. I don't know if he actually did do it or if it was an accident or what happened, but I totally did not relate that to him. I'm screaming and crying and throwing up at this quote. Like, <laughs> oh no, oh no. I knew this was gonna happen. I just didn't know when. Oh, no. I feel like nothing's gonna really happen though I only have this much left. I've been grinding the day's like halfway over. <laughs> okay I'm officially this far in you know what that means. You know what it's time for My least favorite part of every single book that makes me so mad because it always happens for no reason the third act breakup Every time without fail. I'm gonna hate the third act breakup. I don't know why I mean I know a lot of authors don't do it but most do. And I know it adds to the story. It happens in every romance and rom-com because it's like the climax and then the resolution, you know, but I hate it because it is always the stupidest, dumbest reason. 
This one isn't too stupid, like it's more like an insecurity kind of thing, but it's just, it still pisses me off. It's so unnecessary. Okay, that was, that was not what I thought it was gonna be. I'm actually very happy with how that was written. See, this is what I like. This is why I hate third act breakups. It's because the couple could be like this mature romance and like the characters are literally in their 20s. Like you should know how to communicate your feelings. And then all of a sudden there's like a third act breakup where like a switch flips and they become the most immature, unable to communicate, annoying characters. But this is when I like it. Like there's a problem. They freak out, they talk about it, and they fix it immediately like a real serious couple would rather than breaking up. <laughs> Why am I gonna cry? But that last, the last page before the epilogue, it's so cute. They had like a little moment that was similar to like the first time they met and they used like the exact quotes from when they first met. And now I'm at the nine years later epilogue. Okay, I finished. I literally just grinded that out. Was I in two sittings? See, the, what I really like about like Hannah Grace and sports romance in general is I always can finish them really quickly because there's always something happening in every chapter to keep you entertained. Should I give like my final review right now? Is that how I should do this? Like finish the book, review, finish the book, review. I would give this like, I think I'd give it four out of five stars. When I read Icebreaker, I gave it five stars, but like in hindsight, I don't know if I still would. You know me, after I read a book and then it marinates, I'm like, wait, that's not the right rate ranking. But I love the characters in this. Her characters are so likable, which I appreciate because who likes to read about annoying, unlikable, cringy characters, you know? I think Russ is my dream man. I love him. He is so cute and sweet, but I feel like this book, I don't know if it's shorter or what, but I just feel like it was a little bit less developed than the characters in the first book. I don't know why I feel that way because I'm not even sure if there was much of a difference. If you like an easy, quick, fun, and you wanna have butterflies, I recommend her books. My only complaint is that I didn't really like feel like I knew, I mean, I knew the characters, but I don't think like I had a deep connection with them. And I also just like would have preferred if this series was all at the college, which I, I, I mean, I, I appreciate the switching it up, but something about a summer camp, it's just reminded me of when I was a child. It's hard to like picture like a sexy romance and it's like at a summer camp, you know? Yeah, I'd give it a four out of five and I can't wait for the rest of the series. As the series keeps going, it's probably become one of my favorites of all time, like as it grows and grows. I wonder how many books she's planning on. Does anybody know? I'm pretty sure Henry's next. It better be next. He's literally all I care about. I want a JJ book, but I'm pretty sure we're not gonna get one. I think she said that, but yeah. That is my final review. The reason I just grinded this out right now is because I just went to my mailbox when I woke up and I had a very, very, very exciting package that we're gonna do an unboxing of. And I've been waiting for it to come and I decided to just start this video without it because I was like, it will come eventually. And it came at perfect timing. It came today and I was like, okay, I'm gonna finish this book and then we can open it. Liz Tom Ford reached out to me a few months ago. Sorry, the construction is so loud. But she reached out to me a few months ago and told me she wanted to send me an arc of her new book which you already know I almost started crying when I read that because Mile High and especially The Right Move are like two of my favorite reads. And I knew the series was about to become like my all-time favorite once there's like more books. So when she reached out, I was like immediately yes. At the time I was living at my parents' new house. And so I had her send the package there, not realizing how long it was gonna take to come and like I was moving. So the package shipped to my parents' house and I was no longer there. So then I begged my parents to ship it to me here. And then I finally got it. So we get to open the PR package together. Let me go get it. Ta -da, ta -da, ta -da, ta -da, ta -da. Let's do an unboxing together. I like honestly rarely get arcs or like PR packages like this. So this is very exciting for me. Oh my God, my name is right here. Wait, this is so cute. Okay, wait, I fucking hate these things. If I start finding these in my apartment, I'm gonna be so pissed. But look, a little pendant. This is a baseball in the romance, so I'm assuming it's like that theme. I don't know how to open this stuff without these little tissue things going everywhere. Oh, a candle! It smells like pumpkin bread or it. Banana bread. Oh my god, it is banana bread! Warm banana bread scented coconut wax candle. Thank you so much for all the love you gave to the right move on your YouTube. I hope you enjoy Caught Up. Love, Liz. Thank you! Next, I see a canvas. Is this a tote bag? Oh, it's all the characters' names. And then I see a little pack of stickers with a baseball player on it. Okay then. I haven't even read it yet, but why does this make you want to cry? You know how much I love a single dad romance, and that is the cutest shit I've ever seen. Miller's favorite recipes. Wait, this is so cute. Tiramisu, M&M cookies, and banana bread. This is such, such a well thought out PR box. A friendship bracelet? has their names on it. It says Kai and Miller. Here's the book. Oh, it's in plastic wrap. 
I'm going to proudly wear this on every article of clothing I have every single time I leave my house. Hey boys! The book. What we all came here for. I'm not cracking the spine. I'm gonna take such good care of her. Oh, we're gonna start caught up tonight. I am so happy about this. Like I wanna cry. <gasps> she signed it! <laughs> That's so cool. I'm very happy. Okay, it's the next day. I didn't, oh. I didn't end up reading last night. So I'm going to start caught up now. I'm so, so, so excited. I have read the back now and I'm even more excited. I'll keep you updated. Obviously I can update more in the beginning because it's not really spoilers yet. See, I already know I'm gonna love it because it's every trope that I love. Single dad. She's also the nanny to his kids. So like he's gonna see the relationship between her and his kid. And it's also his boss's daughter. Oh my God, I'm so excited. I'm literally still in the first chapter, but I'm just thinking ahead because he's talking with the dad. It's gonna be so good. Their first meeting. I wonder if Isaiah is gonna get a book because they're bringing him up a lot, which is Kai's brother. You already know when the dad, sorry, I'm sweating. I need to turn the fan on. But you already know when the dad is warning him, you're gonna fall in love. Like you better not fall in love with my daughter. That he's gonna do exactly that. <laughs> Okay, I feel like they're both very obviously into each other, which is sometimes a dynamic I don't love. I don't love like when from the start they already like each other. Like I need more of a buildup, but I feel like because there's so many forbidden aspects that there will still be a buildup because they're gonna fight it and whatever. But like, I usually just don't love when the characters are like obsessed with each other from the start. Not that they're obsessed, but they're both attracted to each other and they both like each other. It's very obvious. They're like already flirting and stuff. I think right now I'm gonna go change and I'm gonna go for a walk and go sit at a cafe or like read somewhere. I'm just like wanting to get out of the apartment right now, but I do wanna keep reading. And then when I come home, I'll just update you on everything I read. This is gonna be backlit, but I don't care. I wanna sit at the counter. Um, I just got back from my walk, which was really nice and relaxing, and I read a little bit. Kai and Miller have like been started talking more. She started babysitting the kid. She's a baker, but she's on break because she's like feeling uninspired, and she's like a top pastry chef in like the whole world. She's taking this job for the summer. And so like there's an end date like they know she's leaving she has work to go back to in like the end of summer i don't know if i like that and like i feel like every book i read where there's like an end date it's like you know that they're not actually going to end up going to the thing that they're planning on so like the whole book when they're talking about it we're like we all know you're not gonna actually go so i don't know how i feel about that and also it's just like then it holds the couple back from actually pursuing each other not because they don't love each other but because they know the other one's leaving so they're also like flirting a lot and she's kind of bringing out this like more fun happy side of him that he hasn't shown in a long time because he's felt like the weight of being a dad like the responsibilities then there was also a chapter where they had family dinner where all the friend group was there and it literally made me so happy like i love seeing them all together so much can't wait for miller to like be part of the friend group and like part of the girls and like for the couples to keep expanding and growing also maybe i just wasn't as aware of it in the other books because i didn't consider him but now i feel like isaiah is so much more prominent in the friend group like i didn't even know him or i didn't even realize he existed like he must have either not been mentioned or completely went over my head because he's definitely getting a book because he's been mentioned so many times and all of a sudden he like comes to the family dinners and is like part of the friend group so he's definitely getting a book as well as rio i don't know if she's announced anything yet i'm not gonna look on her instagram or anything until after i finish reading because i want to show that i'm right <laughs> The only thing I'm like worried about with this book is like they already very obviously like each other. They're hugging and flirting and I'm just like confused because I'm only this far in and it's like how is there this much? Kai is so hot. <laughs> like I love him. He is more serious and like straight to the point and he is just really hot. Like I'm picturing like the hottest baseball player like the way they describe him, the way they describe him with the glasses. Oh my God, he's already so protective over her. Like the other, the rest of the team is obviously like noticing her cause she's traveling with the team. And he's like to her dad, like, you're not gonna tell them to back off. You're not gonna tell them to back off, whatever. Cause he's jealous already. I have butterflies. This scene reminds me of Heartless by Elsie Silver. There's like, they're both in the hot tub or the pool and the tension is getting really strong. Okay, I see how their story is like, her backstory and then Kai's story with his son are literally identical. 
Because Isaiah is going to get a book and it's going to be with this girl Kennedy. Which I'm confused because I think they said she was engaged or she has like a wedding ring or some shit. And she's the athletic trainer and she's like very serious about her work. Like she doesn't hang out with any of the guys. But Isaiah has like a big crush on her. But like it's kind of a joke. Like he's kind of like the team playboy and like hooks up with a lot of girls. But on the low he like jokes about being in love with Kennedy. But like I don't think he's joking and I think they're going to be the next book. And she was like need to see a girl in your jersey. And he was like I like to see pretty girls in my jersey. I like to take them off too. Where did that come from? Not them all at the bar right now. The whole team is teaming up against Kai to like make like a huge joke and try to make him jealous by dancing with Miller. Like the whole team isn't on it. Oh God, you know shit's going down when you see this. Look at that last line. <gasps> oh God, this scene is so fucking cute. If the dad didn't interrupt. All three of them in the morning with the baby. Okay, it's later now and I'm getting cozy in bed. I'm ready to read again. I'm this far in and I absolutely love it so far. Even though it was giving insta love at first, it's not really anymore. Guys, please look at me right now with my flashlight on my book because I'm too lazy to get up and go turn my light on. Because <laughs> it just keeps getting progressively darker in here. So now I just have my light. <laughs> the only thing I don't like about this book is the cringe nickname. Both nicknames that the team calls her and then what she calls him kind of like a joke but like i read a lot i think I re i'm more than halfway good morning it's actually the afternoon it's like 2 p.m and i'm drinking my afternoon matcha but i haven't started reading yet so one thing about the men that liz tom ford writes is they're gonna have an acts of service love language and they're gonna do the cutest shit and as a girl whose love language is acts of service can this stay i just want to cry every time i read her books because like the thought and the care that these men have like no men in real life could ever would ever remember these little details that they remember that was like the main reason why i loved the right move but this one even has it too like he remembers every little detail like their first date was so perfect like he knew her so well he knew exactly what she would like and what she needed and he says all the right things and he also just like remembered a little detail about her again like he keeps doing it and it's just so cute when is this gonna happen to me not him having the best baseball game of his entire life the day after they sleep together for the first time he like literally threw a no hitter like <laughs> she's so powerful <gasps> My food's ready. I love how Kai has a relationship with Miller's dad, kind of like a father figure relationship. And he's like going to him for advice and like confiding in him and like trying to figure out what to do. <laughs> it's so cute, like the quote I just read. Anyways, I'm almost done, you guys. Like, do you see that? I'm kind of going crazy. I spent my whole day <laughs> reading, I feel like. <laughs> oh my God, this quote. Okay, if you don't want like even a minor spoiler, then skip, double tap the screen right now. But if you don't care, look at that quote. If you ever decide to stop running and make a home, make it with me. We're getting to like third act breakup time. But this one we like knew was coming, you know, like the whole book has been a countdown. See though, like as much as I'm an independent person and like I do believe in like putting myself and my needs first, if I had the relationship that she has and also was like like in love with the son, like the kid too, and I had like formed this little family that I loved so much, and then I had to leave for work, <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm quitting my job. <laughs> like, <laughs> I'm not going. She hates her job anyway. Like, I would not go. I just finished. The segue into Isaiah and Kennedy's relationship, I was not expecting. And then I just read the acknowledgements or, and then like the last page and she does say that it says, book four, play along, a Chicago baseball romance, Isaiah and Kennedy's story. So I knew it, but the way that it's gonna start is not what I expected at all. I don't know how I feel about that trope. So we'll see, but I finished. So let me sit up and set up so we can do a final talking review. Okay. I just finished, I read this book in two days. I think I read the other one in two days too. I have no life. Overall, I think I give this four and a half stars. It's still fresh, so like obviously I have to let it marinate for a little bit, but right off the bat, I'm giving it four and a half. I love the tropes, I loved, I felt like I actually knew the characters, kind of, like it, it's obviously not like deep, because it's only like one standalone book. Um, I feel like I connected with them, I liked the story, I liked like the whole plot and stuff. 
there was like some things I found cringy and like a little, I don't know. But like for the most part, I really liked it. I didn't love like the third act breakup era of the book like obviously i never like that but like especially when it's like you know they're just gonna get back together and it's like drawn out and you're like oh my fucking god like you're unhappy just like fix it <laughs> i'm excited for the next one this one's probably my second favorite in the series now i think it goes the right move caught up and then mile high so and i've rated all of them above four stars and the right move was five stars so like this is right in the middle and i can't wait to read the rest of the series this is definitely gonna become one of my favorite series of all time so happy this book did not disappoint at all if anything like it was exactly what i expected and like exactly what i wanted i loved how like we still saw a lot of the friend group which is like what i really appreciate about series and what i look forward to um i love that we still got that we got like the friend group talking to each other and giving each other advice and like girls all became friends but i loved it and i really really recommend this series like if you need a good sports romance series this is like a mature sports romance because it's not college they're like older which honestly i appreciate because i feel like the college like romance trope like companion novel series is like not over done but like i've read it a lot so like this is kind of nice because like they're all have like established lives outside of college i don't think i'm gonna start another book tonight to be honest i kind of just want to rot on the couch and go to sleep i am really happy that i finished this it was pretty long i do feel like it could have been shorter my preference like my sweet spot for a book is like mm, like this long but then we still had like that much like i was probably like over it not over it but like i was ready for it to be over by then mostly because i feel like with this book they liked each other so early on which i expressed concern about which it didn't end up being a problem because there were so many things keeping them apart and they were together for a decent amount of time i feel like they could have drawn out his grumpy personality a little bit more i maybe would have preferred it if they did that because they introduced him as being super serious and grumpy and he was for like four chapters <laughs> and then he started like warming up to her and like they had like that whole banter going on and then he became funny and like cool but i feel like they could have drawn out the grumpiness a lot more and maybe it would have added to like the angst and the build-up overall i still really loved it and i'm easily entertained so i really enjoyed it so tomorrow we'll start the next book which i actually have right over here one second i got this in the mail the day before yesterday Hopeless by Elsie Silver. We will be starting this tomorrow. This is probably, I don't know, I keep, I said this about all of them, but this is probably my one I'm most anticipating because this is the last book in the series. I'm pretty sure, I could be wrong, I hope I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure it's the last book in the series. I've been looking forward to it for so long because this series is like, I'm obsessed with the boy in this book from what we've seen in the other books he's like traumatized. He was like, a, was he a prisoner of war? He was in the military and he got like, lost or like captured i don't really remember i will learn about it more i guess when we read but so he's like traumatized and like really closed off and he used to be like really funny and happy so i'm really i love a good like this sounds so bad but i love a good like traumatized like reserved hero also know that it's with like the cute shy sweet small town like bartender girl i feel like that's gonna be good and this one is really long i think this is the longest book in that series as well i feel like books just keep getting longer and longer and longer the first few books in the series i feel like are half the size and then they just like grow and grow and grow i'm also excited about this because if it is the last book in the series i love like epilogues in the last books when like you get the whole found family hits the spot good morning it's time to start reading hopeless i'm so excited i literally rushed through everything i had to get done this morning so i could read okay we're in chapter one and they're already like talking and stuff it's not expecting that so she works at the bar and he's at the bar because he's like sad or angry or whatever <sighs> i'm confused <laughs> it makes me feel something in a sea of numbness we're on page 11. i thought that that wasn't gonna happen to like halfway but okay Oh my god and then her first chapter is her liking him too what oh my god he comes to the bar every night till closing so she doesn't have to walk home or go home by herself but he's obsessed with her already this is like the opposite of what i thought this book was gonna be i thought it was gonna be like the slowest burn ever guys i'm so confused okay i like it so far but why is he so nice i literally had this whole perception of him in my head well they made it seem like in like the other characters books they were like He's been so mean and quiet and reserved and like snappy since he's gotten back. So I thought we were gonna get like this grumpy traumatized guy, but he's like nice and like funny and joking with her and like doing all these sweet gestures. And like, I'm on page 37. 
He's still like closed off from his family though, so we'll probably get like development there. Like it's giving insta love. I'm literally this far in and he says, I head straight for where the best part of my day always is. The place I've come to associate with both peace and purpose. The stool at the end of Bailey Jensen's bar. I wanted a slow burn. So far I like them both, but like I was so excited for a slow burn with like a grumpy traumatized hero. And that's just like not what this is giving at all. I think I just had a completely I I different idea of this book because I also thought she was supposed to be like super shy and quiet. And then she's saying like all these really bold things. The question she just asked him, I'm like, where did that come from? I thought you were supposed to be like quiet and innocent, but like slay, I guess. Oh my God, a protective, protective scene. I'm eating it up. Like, that was really hot. He just like literally beat someone up for her. They're super cute, ship them, whatever. But he just like came up with a fake proposal idea because that's the trope of this book. I'm not understanding the point of the fake proposal. Like, I feel like it's only gonna backfire. Basically, they're doing it because she's like the town outcast and she thinks that everyone judges her for her last name. And he's like, okay, then get engaged to me and we'll see how everyone acts when you're in Eaton. Like they said they're gonna break off the engagement before they get married, so she's never even gonna have his last name. But like, also what does he get from this? He's saying like it will get his family off his back. Like how would that get the family off his back? They're literally just worried about him because he keeps like not showing up to family dinner and like not talking to any of them. Like he just wants to marry her. <laughs> He didn't need to come up with this whole like, fake excuse, but you know, I eat up a fake dating trope, so. Okay, I have to stop reading for now. I made a decent chunk. I'm on chapter eight. I read that much. She just agreed to the fake dating situation. They're having some like flirty, a lot of flirty moments. Although it's not what I expected, like, I still think I'm gonna like it. Like I still have high expectations. It's just like not what I thought it was gonna be at all. I'm really confused because I feel like they built up this book to be all about like how he has PTSD and stuff, which I'm sure he still does but like he's acting very normal, which is not what I expected. I'm so excited to see him like open up or like not open up, but I guess like open up to his family. Like I want, cause like his family's expressing like some concern cause he's like obviously like acting very different, like not showing up to things and stuff. So I can't wait for him. I want him to have like a deep talk with like all the boys. I mean, being more excited about that, like the found family than I am about the romance. I'm on exactly page 100. That's kind of satisfying, but I have to stop for now, so. Okay, good morning, everybody. It's the next day. I didn't end up updating the rest of the day yesterday, but I did read a lot yesterday. So let me pick up where I was to like fill you in because now I'm like, last time I updated you, I was here and now I'm here. So a lot happened, but also I feel like nothing really happened at the same time. I'm really trying to work through my feelings on this book because I feel like right off the bat, it just was like, I had really high expectations for what I thought it was gonna be and it's just like not what I thought, which is on me. Like I should have just like gone into it not expecting anything, but being the final book in the series, like I just was expecting a lot. The other family and friends are not in this at all. Like they're barely in the story. They're barely even mentioned, which I feel like in the other books, the side characters were so prevalent. They had family dinners every week and all this stuff. And that's just like not really happening. No one's even like talking to Bo. And I feel like they made it seem like in the other books that everyone was so worried about him. Everyone was checking him out, in on him every day. And like, that's just like not the case. Like they don't talk. They're like, Bailey and Bo are kind of in their own world. I'm into the story and I want to keep reading it, but I also feel like they're already together. Like they already like each other. They've liked each other since the very beginning. That it's like, what? what's the point of what I'm even reading at this point? Like it's so long. They did go to one family dinner and it's why I was like, oh, finally the family's here. But then the family didn't ask any questions to Bo. They were like, oh, you're engaged? Cool. No questions. Not how did you meet? What, how long have you been dating? Who even is this girl? Like they all know of her from the town, but literally no one asked any follow-up questions. They're just like, okay, cool. Like no one even asked them when, like why he hadn't told any of them or anything. Like they just like weren't even curious. Like I'm so confused. Like the, the family just has such like a minuscule role in this story. The only thing they haven't done is like hook up. So like, is that all we're waiting for? Is like, when are they just gonna finally hook up? Is that gonna be like the rest of this book? Not to complain a lot because like, I do like this book so far. Like I like it. It's just like so different. As I've said, like I just like thought so much different. We don't know anything that happened to Bo yet. Like I am halfway and we know he was like a hostage or whatever happened. He was lost at war, but he's barely talked about it. He's like glazed over it, like mentioned it one time and then like talked about how he has burns on his feet, but like no depth to the story. Like we don't know anything that happened to him, how he feels about it. Like I'm sure we'll obviously learn about it like later on, but like 
they're like already in love with each other and like neither of them has really opened up at all i'm like i don't really even know what i've been reading <laughs> like you guys like each other and that's all that's happening but i'm gonna continue reading now i'm on chapter 20 okay i'm currently on chapter 25 and it's still the same thing <laughs> like i feel like nothing's really happening like i'm trying to update you guys and like I have nothing to say besides they still like each other. I just feel like there could have been so much more buildup. This is the cringiest scene I've ever read in my life. I actually feel sick to my stomach. I feel like I'm gonna throw up. This can't be real. What chapter is this? Chapter 26 in the bathtub. I'm gonna throw up every- Why is this the cringiest thing I've ever read? Oh my god, oh my god. These two characters cannot mean be more opposite than what I imagined them to be and what they painted them to be. And they still haven't talked about it. So it's like, I don't know why they built up this whole persona of him in the other books. How are you a whole ass lost or whatever for, for like weeks at a time? You survive and make your way back and then you don't even talk about it? I'm this far in and you still haven't mentioned, you still haven't talked about it. Like you make like one or two comments. Like, I need chat. I thought it was gonna be a whole book, like, unraveling his trauma and, like, be super deep and stuff. And instead, I'm just getting these cringy, like, sexual scenes every other chapter. They keep mentioning Willa's brother, and they've actually, like, gotten into detail about his character, and now I'm wondering if he's gonna get a book. Like, they've mentioned him, like, five times. I've never heard of this man. Like, I read Willa's book, and, like, I feel like he wasn't a prevalent character. And then in this book, they've mentioned him, like, five times and, like, gone into full depth about his character. And, like, they've talked more about Willa's brother than Willa herself, you know? I kind of want to stop reading. Like, I'm kind of not in the mood anymore. I'm at chapter... What chapter is this? 29. They're about to go into the city. I'm that far in. I'll probably finish it tonight, honestly. I kind of want to be done and, like, know how it's going to end and, like... Hopefully this part will like change my mind about how I'm feeling right now. Like I just miss the other characters so much and I feel like, especially if this is the last book, like please, can we just like, I don't know. Okay, it's a lot later now and I'm in bed reading. I'm gonna stay here for the rest of the night, but I'm determined to try to finish before I fall asleep. Don't know how realistic that is. I have like 200 pages left. I just read the part where they're at the club. Okay, finally, Bo is like confiding in Jasper at least. Like, it's not his brothers, but at least his best friend. I feel like we have not gotten any sentimental moments yet. And But he's not talking about himself. He's just talking about his relationship, which... This entire book is just about the relationship, which I know it's a romance, but I just like it so much more when books have like more than that. And I feel like, like I keep saying this book just had the potential to be so much more than just focused on the two of them. Like it could have been their backstory. What the fuck is going on? <laughs> what the 360? I thought he was about to tell her he's in love with her. And now I think I'm at the third act breakup. Literally, what is he doing? Is he stupid? Okay. I'm so confused. False alarm, I guess. That was the dumbest, like, miscommunication I've ever read in my life. Like, what? That was so- The way he just did that was the dumb- was so stupid. Okay, I feel like- Okay. <laughs> How is this book this long? And I still feel like the two of them don't know each other. Whatever, like, all love confessions and shit are happening, and I'm just like, but you still haven't talked about- your trauma is like barely, like you've literally mentioned it in like two sentences one time. Or like as a joke in passing. Like there's been no deep connection made. And I'm almost done. I'm getting so frustrated. I think the reason I'm like frustrated is because the characters have such, I don't know how to explain it, like potential backstories. Like they have so much they could be talking about and their relationship could be so deep and they could talk about these traumas because they have so much and it's just not being used for anything like they don't talk about their backstories like okay in the other books it was fine that like there wasn't that much trauma and it was mostly romance because the characters didn't have that much trauma or if they did it was like they talked about it and they got over it and they confided in each other whatever and in this one they just like they have these really deep rooted issues and they're just like not disgust okay i'm stopping for the night at chapter 39 i'm gonna finish when i wake up i have literally that much left but i'm a little bit nervous for how this is gonna end because like either way i'm not gonna be happy about it because she wants to move away to the city and he knows that so like either they're gonna move to the city so she can be happy and then they're gonna leave the whole family behind or they're gonna stay and she's gonna be unhappy. So I'm assuming they're gonna leave. Like this whole point of the, what made this series so great is that they all live on this ranch together. That was the best part. 
It's the next day and I'm officially finished reading Hopeless, so I thought I would come here and do my final review. I read the last few chapters this morning and now I can give my final thoughts and opinions. I feel like I've been really pessimistic about this book like the whole time I've been reading it, but I would overall give it three out of five. So like I would recommend it, but it's not one of my favorites. And I am overall pretty disappointed with it, unfortunately just because I like built it up so much in my head. But I feel like I've kind of summed up how I feel throughout reading it, but I wrote down some thoughts that I wanted to share with you guys so I wouldn't forget anything because I feel like as I was reading, I was like, I need to say that. I need to say that, <laughs> like whatever. Overall, like I said, it was okay, like for a romance, like in romance sense, but also right off the bat, I thought their reason for fake dating like didn't make much sense. So then I wasn't very invested in it. Like the only reason fake dating works is if there's a real reason that they need to fake date. And I felt like this didn't really have that much of a valid reason. So I was kind of just like already apprehensive going into it. The biggest thing for me was I felt like the characters had no depth to them or they were very like two-dimensional Is that the word? <laughs> like they didn't have much to them Like I couldn't tell you the personalities of these characters and I read this much about them You know like before going into this book I felt like I knew more about them than I did by the end of this book It's just like they had so much potential I said this so much they had so much potential to have these deep backstories because they do they do have deep backstories But it was never fully explored and never talked about in depth like we don't really know what happened to Bo when he was away we know like glimpses of what happened but he never really got into like the thick of it he never talked about how much it's impacted him and how it's changed him and like and the same with Bailey like I felt like she had so much potential as well with her character because she was like so sweet and accommodating because she felt like no one liked her so she had to make up for it but then they never I mean I honestly feel like they went into her story more than they went into his and their relationship just like felt shallow to me like it was very physical attraction they liked each other right off the bat they didn't talk about anything really that serious with each other it was kind of glazed over and kind of just like a mutual understanding of each other but never like talked about i don't know and then the third act breakup and the plot twist just was confusing and like didn't make sense to me and i didn't understand why she was really that mad at him and like i didn't understand like it, i don't know it was just kind of like strange and then it also made no sense to me how like she went off on him or whatever or she went off in front of the town like she kind of like did her little rant and then all of a sudden everyone just like respected her and like cared about her and started giving her money i was like what is going on literally it just didn't feel realistic to me something that really really upset me was that being the ending of the series or what i think is the ending if i'm correct i think this is the last book for the ending of the series they didn't give like a lot of closure especially with all the other characters in this series that we've grown to love and they're like this huge found family it literally i don't want to say how it ended but the essence of like living on the ranch and stuff it was just like not the same i don't know i felt like the family didn't make that many appearances in this book as i was hoping considering it was like the finale even jasper wasn't even really in this book and that's supposed to be his best friend he had like a few scenes the brothers barely had any my favorite part of the book was the fact that kate and willa got married at the epilogue they're my favorites i love them so much i just like wasn't satisfied that this was the ending you know like if this was maybe like the third book and then it continued on, I'd probably like appreciate it more because it was just like, okay, it's a fun romance in the middle of a series, but it just didn't hit for me. Just didn't like, it was just like, okay, I guess it's the three stars, you know? The other books though, all of them I gave four or five stars to. So like overall, it's still one of my favorite series of all time. I just like wish this one was like done differently. I just built it up so much in my head. I think that's like the moral of the story is like, I really just built it up in my head. But overall, these are the three books I read in this video and I actually really, really enjoyed myself. Like this was such a good reading week and it was so much fun and like to have new releases and series from authors I love all at one time. Like so fun, so amazing. And my favorite was definitely caught up. I just love her so much. Oh my God, I loved it. And then Wildfire. So cute. This is like just cute and fun. And then Hopeless was my least favorite, but still good. I hope you enjoyed seeing me read these books. I'm sure a lot of you guys have also been reading these books as they've been coming out this month. So let me know all your thoughts and opinions. If you disagree, agree respectfully. Thanks for watching this week's video. If you want to follow me on my other social medias, they're all linked down below as always. And I'll see you in my next video very, very soon. Bye!